Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this C++ tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about functions in C++ and how we can set up functions, um, use the define functions and use the built-in functions from the standard library. So first of all here, we're just going to talk about like what functions are in C++ and like how we can use them. So it's, it's possible like we have different kind of functions in C++ where we have like the built-in functions from the standard library where where there's just some like built-in functions that we can just go in and use and import some different kind of libraries and then use the built-in functions for some different kind of purposes and operations. And then we also have the user-defined functions here. Let's say you want to you want to run run a function that you make yourself. So you would like define your own function with a return type and the parameters that you want to pass to that function and then do uh, some operations in, inside of that function and then like update some values or return the value that the function has, has created. So there's these like uh, two two different th uh, types of functions in C++ where, we, where which is the building functions and user defined functions and we're going to see some examples of like how we can how we can uh, define our own functions in C++ later in this video in uh, Sublime Text and we're also going to see like some of the building functions there is in um, in C++ and a lot of the times like it's it's better to use a building function if there is one. Um, compared to making one yourself because the building functions has have, they have been tested so many times and and they're like they're like you can be certain that they're bug free and, and stuff like that so it's really good um, implementation and also very like very efficient um, implementation um, compared to like if you define your own function like they're not if, if so much efficient like time wise and also like space wise as the building function so then we have an example here of a function in C++ where, where first of all we have to define uh, def, uh, determine like what return type we want like we can have like a different uh, different types of, of data types here uh, as a return type we can have integers we can have float values or or vectors or even like some object we, that we want to return from from our function so we can like um, define ourselves like what we want to return for our function here but we do it in the start here before the name of the function and then we specify the name here of the function and then we have the parentheses here um, where the parameters to the function, like the arguments we need to pass to the function when we call it, uh, we specify them inside here of the parentheses here. And then we have these curly brackets here where like the, the body of our function is. So the code we want to run and uh, run or like uh, the operations we want inside of our function um, is inside the, these uh, curly brackets here. And then we can like write the code in the body of the function here. And then we want to when we want to call our function somewhere else in the code. It could be, for example, in the main loop or in another function. Then we just call um, then we just call it with the name here and then the parentheses. And then we we pass the arguments um, to the function that we want uh, that we want. And then it will like either return a value if we are specified a, a data type here, or if we we can also like specify a void a void keyword keyword here, which just means that uh, we won't return anything. It could be like if we want to update some of the variables or like the, the arguments that we have parsed to our, our function when we call it or it could be like just if we want to print something out with it with that function and with that we don't need to return anything with them we can just use uh, the word keyword here instead of uh, returning some some data type so there is also uh, these building functions here from the like the standard template library um, in C++ where like, uh, there's a lot of different kind of functions that we can use and some of them like are more efficient um, than if you just uh, build uh, like s define them by yourself and try to like uh, do the calculations or operations in, in those functions by yourself because uh, these functions here they have been uh, tested many times and they're almost like bug free all of them um, and we can just like go directly into them and import the standard library uh, in your code and then you can just use the functions here and there's a website here I want to show you uh, where you can go look up like um, the functions like all of the functions there is in C++ I'll just open up the, all the functions here so you can see like how many functions there are and you can see like uh, what kind of like um, a theme or like in what kind of like library the, the functions are, are, are in and like what they can be used for and then there's like a small description here what the function does and you can also like click into the function here if you want to like uh, look at like what what does the this begin word do when we do, when we call them on, on on vectors here it returns an iterated to to uh, to the beginning of the container and if you want to see like an example or like read more about the functions um, and how we can use them then we can click into it and we'll get a short um, short example here where you can see like uh, the syntax is like we need to first include the vector uh, library here for, for being able to 
to use this uh, vector and also like this begin uh, begin uh, function here. And then we have an iterator here, which is just begin. And then like we can has also have like a const iterator or uh, or an iterator. And then we have a short example here, like how we can use an iterator to like iterate through all the elements in a, in a vector, for example. Um, so here we just uh, like um, see, see and in, um, we're just taking in uh, like strings or like characters from the terminal and then we store them on the vectors here, uh, vector here words. And then we just iterate through all the, um, all the characters in that string, um, string down here. So we will be a vector of string and then we have like an, an iterator uh, that we can go through the whole um, the whole vector with and then like the begin keyword it just returns uh, as we saw down here uh, the, the function uh, returns an iterator to the first element of the vector and then we can also have like have like a words.end so we call it like the end function which will um, return the iterator pointing at the last element of the vector so there are different kind of examples here where you can go into like um, the C++ uh, C++ here reference and you can look up the different kind of functions and as you can see if I just scroll down here like there, there are a lot of different kind of functions that we can use and we can also like there's a lot of functions for like algorithms and um, algorithms and also like data structures uh, so if you're like working with algorithms and data structures like it's, it's really good to use a C++ and a data library here because like all of the built-in functions um, work with algorithms and data structures and they're really efficient so if we want to like, for example, we are given a vector or some kind of array and we want to sort that vector in ascending or descending order, like we can just call this uh, sort function here from the algorithm and it just sorts a range into ascending order or, and, or, and then we can yeah, like use some of the other functions um, where we just like call the vector we want to sort dot begin and dot end. So we give it the first element and the last element in the vector and then, then it just sorts the vector by this line of code here. And if we like wrote like a function r begin and r end, then it will uh, sort the vector in reverse order. So they're pretty useful these vectors here. And if we were going to like sort the vector um, with a user defined or like the at the function we defined ourselves, then we needed to like think about like how we can sort that. And we also need to implement it in a very efficient way. Um, so time complexity and also like space complexity is good. So it's better to just use the build-in function here and does it in, in like a line of code and it's like really easy to to see. And if you're if you don't really know like how it works or like what it returns and what parameters it, it, it needs, then you, you can just go into this website here and like uh, see some different kind of examples and maybe read a bit about the functions. We can see that uh, this, the algorithm behind sort is the intro sort algorithm and the sort runs in O and like n time, which is like uh, pretty good uh, compared to some other sort of sorting algorithms which is uh, quadratic so it's a pretty nice website here and we can also see like uh, over here we have like some algorithm vectors some different kind of uh, data, data data structures we also have some strings like we can have different kind of methods and use them on strings and also just like the standard c library where we have some math and also like input outputs uh, if we want to go down on a lower level so let's jump into Sublime Text here and I'll show you some different kind of examples of like how we can set up our own function and how we use them uh, in C++. So we're not jumping into Sublime Text here and I'm going to show you some different kind of examples where first of all we're going to include the, the IO stream library here which is the standard library and some of the built-in functions um, is, is, is inside this IO stream here. And we also need this vector um, vector library here where we, when we need to like deal with, with vectors and some of the, uh, the built-in functions uh, that we can use on vectors. So the first function here is just like a pretty simple function. It has the, the, the void return type, like if you can say that, but it doesn't return anything because the keyword here is void. And then our function name here is print hello and doesn't take any parameters. And then the function inside the body here of the function, we just see out hello world. Um, so this function doesn't do like much, but it's like to give you an, uh, a quick introduction to like how we can set up a function and how it works. And then we can go down here to our main function and call our print hello here. And we can see if we run the program, it will print out a hello world to the terminal down here. So it's a, it's a pretty basic example. And and if we like have a function where we want to, uh, let's say we have an example here where we have like, uh, we want to calculate the sum of two numbers. So the return type here will be an integer because we want to, um, we're passing two uh, integers here as parameters. Like it could also be floats or, or doubles if you like need more precision. So, 
the sum of two numbers here, it takes like the, the first number and the second number um, as integers that we want to sum together. And then we have like some sum here we get just initialized to zero. Like we, we could just return the, the num1 plus num2, but this is like more to show you like how how we can uh, like write code inside of um, our body here and then we can return um, the result of the operations we did inside of the body. So in this case here we have the sum which is just equal to uh, the first number plus the second number and then we return the sum here of these two numbers. So if we go down here to the code and we for example like one here we call the function up here sum of two numbers. So if we want to see out that we can just like write c out and then sum of two numbers. And then we can pass uh, the, the two numbers here that we want to sum up and, and see out to the terminal. So the first here is the first num, comma, this, the second num we want to add. And if we hit shift enter here, we can see that it prints out six in this case because uh, two plus four is indeed six. So this is um, a way like how we can add two numbers with a function and it's not like we could have just like wrote, written here that uh, that the first noun plus second noun, but it, like function can be used for a lot of different kind of things. And if we want to do like um, some lines of code like more than one time, we might uh, consider putting them into a function, and then we can call that function uh, whenever we want uh, to run that code. So if we just come this out here, we also have um, another function here, um, which is like a bit more complicated, but it's it's when we, in this function here, we just want to swap two elements that we parse as parameters to our function here. And then we're talking about like re a reference um, here. To, so we pass a reference uh, to our function here, which we're going to talk about in the next video, uh, where we're going to talk about like pointers and references and how we can use that in C++ because pointers and references, like they're very useful in C++ um, because we can like point to the memory at, at addresses and do some modification in the memory address. So we're like really close to, to the hardware here in C++ and it also like, that's probably like why it, it makes C++ like one of the best uh, programming language like when we, when we compare it to other programming languages, um, when we talk about efficiency, both memory wise and also like um, how fast the programs can be. So in this case here, we just like have a reference to two parameters here. So if we just pass the two parameters here without a reference, then it will just make a copy of the parameters that we put into the function here. And if we like put in two numbers here, it will actually like double the size in memory. So in this case, it doesn't really like make that, that much of a sense because we don't have like two numbers. But if we had like a vector or an image or something like that, and we just kept on copying, copying that picture uh, or image and, and storing it in memory every time we did, um, every time we call that function, like it will just accumulate up and we'll use a lot of memory um, for our program it will, and it will not be uh, very efficient. So we can like pass our, our parameters here as as, uh, as references and then we are operating at that memory address where this uh, this uh, parameter here or like the ac argument is, is passed. So first of all, we just, when we want to swap the two numbers here, we store the first number here uh, in a temporary variable and then we set the first variable here to the second variable and then the second uh, second parameter or variable here is set equal to the temporary variable. So we have swapped these two numbers that we passed uh, to, the, to the swap function here. So we go down here and see an example. We first of all uh, print out the original first num and second num, and then we swap the two numbers and print them out afterwards again. And then we have just like swapped the two um, the two numbers at the memory addresses in the memory. So it's like we have, we have because we, we did it with, um, we did it with passing the parameters or arguments um, as a reference to the function instead of just like um, in the original way. So if we print this out here, we can see that the first time we, we, we print it out, it is indeed like two and four. And then we call a, uh, our swap function here. And then the first number will be four and two. So we're just like swap the numbers in the memory. Uh, so we, now we're like really close to the hardware and on a like kind of low, low level programming compared to like uh, some other higher level program where we don't have where we don't have access to the actual memory um, in our computer. So the last example here is um, if we want to like um, pass a, a really a really big um, like data set or an image or a really large vector to uh, to our function, we can also use this const um, reference um, parameter where like. It's it's kind of the same as as, as in the previous example where we where we pass uh, and uh, like our our argument as a reference so we don't copy our so we don't copy our um, 
like the parameter we passed to like to copy our variable like uh, several times then we also use this const keyword here if we don't want to uh, modify modify like the data that we are passing to this function here so let's say here we want to print out a vector and we first of all we want to um we, we want to modify the, the first the first index here in the numbers vector that we pass here as, as a parameter and then we want to change that element to five here and if we try to run the program now it will give, give us an error because we 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 try to assign a value to a read only location because like we when we when we declare our reference up here like our parameter up here as a const reference then it's on, it, it is on, it is a read only um, location and we can write to that location which means that uh, we can't we can modify um, the parameter or like the, the data that we have passed as a parameter here and it makes sense to use this const reference if we like um, just want to do some calculations or uh, or like pass it an image and we don't need to like uh, want to uh, destroy or do some modifications on that image that could like destroy the data or or make some different kind of like errors um, in our image so that's why we can like pass a parameter here as a const reference um, so it's really good to use this content reference here and, and also like to make your program more efficient and like more uh, and, and get less errors if you like modify the data and you don't want to modify that, that actual data. And then afterwards here we just print out like all the elements here in the vector that we have passed here as, a, as, a, as an argument. So if we see the last example here and we print it out, we can see that we just print out the one, two, three, four, five, which is the, num which is the vector here that we that we pass here as an argument so we can just like put more numbers in run the program again and it will just print out the numbers again so yeah that's pretty much it for this video guys um we've been over like the different uh different kind of uh, functions here we can we can use and like how to set up functions in c++ where we have like this keyword here where we need to specify uh the return type and then our function name and then inside of the parentheses here we specify our parameters that the function takes and then inside of our body, we can do like all the uh, operations or like the code that we want to run uh, when we call that function. And then we can return some result um, that we have calculated in our code or like update some variables uh, that we passed to um, to um, to our function. And we also like a bit went over like at the, about references and like const references, which we're going to talk uh, more about in in the next video because it's a really like it's a very important topic and it's it's really it's really efficient when we're talking about C++ and most of, uh, one of the most important things in C++ actually when, when we're talking about efficiency uh, compared to other programming languages. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video. And also like this video if you like the content and you want more of it in the future. If you're looking to for like using C++ when you've learned it here like for some other like more practical things I'm also doing a computer vision tutorial in C++ and an algorithm and data structure tutorial also in C++ so if you want to like uh, use uh, some of the things you learn here in C++ in, in some more practical uh, topics and areas you can go check one of the uh, playlists up here uh, I'll link to one of them up here uh, all else I'll just see in the next video guys bye for now